Hey folks, welcome to the channel. In today's build, we're going to finish off the Raindrop Damascus Cleaver. If you're not a subscriber, why not? Hit that subscribe and like button down in the corner. Let's check out this build. We left off last time right after the heat treat, so now it's time to do some grinding. The integrated bolster on this one presented me some challenges. Since the heel of the knife is right under the bolster, I couldn't just grind it straight on the rest. I had to kind of tilt it. So I've got the blade down to final thickness. It's pretty flat on both sides. Yeah, really even. No. That's what I want. Now I'm going to mark it and uh, get ready to put the bevel in. Doing the bevel for this one was really hard. It's such a tall knife and the bevel is kind of short, so it was really tough getting it even and level. I was getting a lot of different facets on the bevel until finally I got it to a good width and then I could just press my finger against the blade and drag it across like you see me doing here. For such a seemingly easy bevel to look at, uh, it was really challenging and it took me the better part of two hours to get this complete. I almost have it where I want it here, just a little bit more grinding and pretty much done. Time to fix the chatter marks in the tang. I was pretty happy how the taper turned out. All right, next task. The tang has got just ever so slightly of a kick to it, so I need to straighten that out. It's probably only about a sixteenth of an inch, but uh, it's, I notice it. So uh, I have this straightening jig, um, which has two of these little guys. There's a slot here, and these just move back and forth, and then I can tighten the bolt to apply pressure. Uh, then I'm just going to take a torch, point it at this, heat it up, and apply some pressure, and it should straighten it out. I'm not using this one because the bolster is acting as the other pin. So let's get a torch and try this out. And I'll, I have the, the blade wrapped in uh, a wet cloth here just so there's no heat that travels up to the bolster or down the blade. Okay, let's get it done. As with what happens with these sometimes, I went a little too far and now it's bent in the other way. So, time to repeat. So I got the bevels done, I straightened the tang. Now it's time for everybody's favorite, hand sanding. I really like this Duragold um, it's adhesive backed paper. Um, it's really sticky, so I usually spray it with just some of this Windex that I use and then wrap it around a piece of steel. Never use a piece of wood because it'll just round out these edges. So, piece of steel and elbow grease. Sanding the plunge on an integrated bolster is always a challenge. Here I'm using a half round file and then I move to 
using a three quarter inch piece of uh, rod and just pulling a piece of sandpaper up and that actually works really, really well. I'm ready to do the handle scales for this knife. Um, I figured I was gonna do a blue liner. I've got this Osage, Osage orange that I'm gonna use. And then I've got these pieces of Chechen uh, that I'm gonna use as kind of bolster kind of thing. And then another piece of blue here just to tie it together. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's glow them up. I'm doing the handle scales just a little different on this one. I'm taking one, drilling the holes through it, and then I'm gonna go back and widen the holes in the tang so I have a little play because I wanna make sure I get a good fit against the bolster. I'm gluing just one of the scales on and I'm gonna let that set without pins. Then I'll be able to drill through that one into the other one and align the holes. And I'll glue that one after just so I have a great fit up with a little bit of play in it so that I get a good fit against the bolster. Okay, ready to do the final fit up. Um, this one is pretty much dry, so and I already cut out the edges, so ready to put the other side on. You saw me drill it. Um, and one important thing here, make sure you do a dry fit up. I've already dry fit this so that I know the pins line up and the pins actually go through. You don't want to get to this point, get glue epoxy on it, and realize that your pins don't line up. So make sure you do that first. You'll notice here I'm cutting off the pins with the bandsaw. Some people might be tempted to just do this on the grinder, but don't because if you do that, you just build up too much heat and you'll, you'll lose your epoxy bond because of that heat. Now I'm just flattening each side so that I can put on my horizontal rest and then I know I'm 90 degrees from the, uh, the grinding belt and I'll get all of my profiles um, square. If you don't have one of these cleaning sticks, you really need to get one. They really clean up your belts and make them last longer. There'll be a link to this in the description along with the other tools that I use in the video. Now to the small wheel to reach the places I couldn't reach on the flat platen. Now I'm starting to profile the handle to match the shape of the bolster. Uh, and this part's pretty fun. I love this part. This is where I'm going to feel it because this blade won't fit in my knife vise, so I don't get to spin it around. I'm going to have to screw with the vise. Pain in the butt. So I got the handle all sanded um, down to 800. Uh, now the tedious part of clear nail polish around all these edges. So now I want to go back and etch the Damascus on the tang. 
I'm using clear nail polish here because when I etch it with a Q-tip, I don't want to get any of that on the wood because I don't want to mark it up. So this way I can just take the clear nail polish off with acetone later. Thanks for joining me on this build. I really love doing this cleaver, it presented me some new challenges, um, but it was really fun and I think it turned out really well. And I know my friend Brandon is gonna love it. Thanks folks. Remember, like and subscribe this video. It really helps me out and we'll see you in the next one.